The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? One, two, three, four. It's the start of something beautiful. A small acquaintance has blossomed and ripened into a precious friendship. It feels like life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. My life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. This is true. Oh, it's better, it's better with two. My life. Oh, it's better with you. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to my brother, my brother, and me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. Hello, Governor. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. And I'm your sweet grown-up brother, Griffin McElroy. We're back in the saddle again. Travis is back stateside. I had this realization. Yes. That this was, well, we were on our hiatus. So the last episode we recorded would have been like... Mid October thirteenth. October thirteenth was the last. Who one can recorded. say? That Who is the say? longest time I have gone without recording an episode of My Brother, My Brother and Me since I was a thirty-year-old man. Since I was sorry, twenty-nine years old. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Since I was twenty-nine, it's the longest I've ever gotten uh, gone without. And you're only a show. thirty. You're only thirty-three. I'm only now. thirty-three now. <laughs> Nominal man. And I, what I realized is, um. I had been contextualizing bad stuff that happened to me in my life with like, well, at least I'll be able to tell this story on the podcast. Yeah, I see. And now when things happen, guys, since we recorded our last episode, I spent two straight calendar days doing nothing but making 15 gallons of chili and then serving 30 gallons of chili. Now and wait, I hold on, Justin. Talk about I'm that. sorry. That's not what fair. kind of loaves and fishes shit is that, Justin? You made 15 and then there were 30. Well, how I'm did you do this? He cut, I, he cut it. I had oh, I see. Stuff. I just dumped it. <laughs> some um, water, <laughs> some water, and some wood shavings. Um. <laughs> so, okay, you, my wife. This is how long it's been. My wife has forgotten that this is. Just the sacred, I, yeah. the sacred um, time. I made, yeah, I, I had some people also making chili. Mary made like 15 gallons of chili. And then I, I served 30 gallons. Of, guys, 15 gallons of chili is so gross. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like it's probably the worst with chili. There's probably other foods, but like I always have these giant freezer bags and I would just like slurp <laughs> them. Oh, into that's this not big the pot. best. N- no, it's not the best way to. Move is chili. Is that how you served it you to just people? Slurp just them into bags? a big pot, and then I'd have this big vat of chili that I'm stirring all day. I'm stirring this frozen chili, and then I would uh-huh. have to take it over to the serving pot. And then these yeah. people would watch me, and I would beg them, like, first off, take a step back because you were in the chili splash zone." <laughs> yeah. And then I said, "Please don't watch this it, when you see this <laughs> amount of food." <laughs> Unappetizing, <laughs> and, and then much. I had to swarm this hot boiling chili into a big pot. Guys, that um, draws too much attention to what a shared experience that is, and like uh, feeding pigs at a trough, right? I, it's just like I, the comparison is too obvious at that point. I, I wouldn't talk about this on a more uh, politically minded podcast, but I think here I'm in safe company. Our booth was the Democrat, like county Democrats, and then our booth is directly positioned across from the county Republicans. I mean, directly oh, positioned. Nice. And these dudes brought two full size. Cardboard stand ups of my, my man DJT <laughs> to watch. My wow, man Donald Zers. Trump was watching and presiding over the chili festivities over at their booth. Known chili aficionado. <laughs> they, yeah. did, they didn't affix Donald. <laughs> And it was a windy day. They so, didn't. Hold on. Oh no. So, so Donald they, would just go 
flying. He flat Stanley'd around everywhere. He That's fun. Flying away. It was great. Did they at least, well, can I ask a question? Did they at least hang a sign on DJ Trump that said like, Yum yum chili time or yum yeah, yum I yeah, love yeah, chili. Yeah, yeah. Just standing like a gargoyle and silent approval bad, of the chili. Bad president, good chili eater boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they uh, we started serving at eleven, and they were done by twelve. And it turned out they had only brought one pot of chili. And, <laughs> New, and it's like guys, you and, brought and one pot of chili. That's the and same. It shows the uh, same way that uh, they think about politics, and because they're they're, they're yes, all thank you. Yes, Republicans. Thank you. Travis. Thank you. They're thank you, like Travis. one pot. Thank you, Travis. They, yeah, brought, thank you. they brought one pot of chili and two Donald Trumps. It's just like yeah. what? That's just, good. Listen, I don't want to tell you your uh, business, but maybe half the uh, Trumps, twice the chili. Then 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 one of the, the dudes came over to our booth and was like, "Do you have a cup?" <laughs> I was like, what? He said, do you have a cup? And it, it, luckily, another candidate had pro- provided cups with his logo on them. So I gave him one. He said, thanks. I got to skim all this grease off the top. It's like, boy, that Yikes. sounds good. Wow, that man. That sounds like good that stuff like right good there. Chili. Seems like you guys really poured your heart and soul into this chili yuma, competition. Yuma. But I felt pretty I good. I was hoping that chili. you were going to say, like, they came over and they're like, hey, guys, uh, could we have some of your chili to give away? <laughs> Um, you seem to have a lot of chili, like the ants in that one story, and we're like the grasshoppers in that story. And if you could give us some of your chili to give to potential voters and say that we made it, that would just be great. Um, yeah, I, I, I've had a while. I drove a truck in a parade. Okay. Whoa, yeah, Justin. Like, yeah, it was like the whole. I mean, like, I went to a castle and stuff, but no, go on about your chili and your thank car you, and the parade. Thank that's, you. That's yes. Great. But Priorities. the thing is, we know all about we know all about your castle, Travis. Yeah. That's true. We, you went. I went to like three castles, dude. Like yeah. three Whoa. castles. Man. Yeah. Were they all really different? No, they were mostly like big stone buildings. Yeah, sure. Was they never there... really got wild with the architecture. Like I walk around my neighborhood now, and I'm like, that building looks different. Oh, look, that's like a that's a mid century monument. Oh, this is and like castles, man. They pretty much did just like squared off stone buildings. How Come were the on, buttresses guys. though? Flying. Wow. And the yeah, battlement. Man. Oh yeah, it was there. It was definitely there. The portcullis, forget the about portcullis? it. The portcullis. What about oh, the bailey? The bailey. It was old. <laughs> it was one old bailey. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's been a while. I've been thinking a lot about elevating my brand in the okay. last two weeks. Oh, okay. Like, and this is true. I think for all of us, and I've been meaning to talk to you guys about this for a while. Yeah. So may- maybe, maybe this isn't the show, but, um. I think we're grown up adult men. I think we're grown up people. Sure. And there's a vibe of specifically me, I think, because I have put toys in my mouth before. Yeah. That I'm like a some sort of boy still. But I like I have a mortgage and two children. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so I've been thinking about like having my brand instead be like grown up, responsible. Uh, Because it's all true. It's just not the face. That is not the public facing. You want to evolve. It's also not as funny or interesting. But it's like, well, maybe not, Travis. But it's it's real, and I think Uh, people want real shit now. So I'm like, I'm like Janus, flipping the mask around. Oh, and now the guy on Great British Griffin has two faces. And so now the goofball who Uh eats who uh, like eats toys and and bananas talks about like toilet humor and stuff like that. Like he's in the back now and up front is a uh, grown up Griffin McElroy. I okay. care. I care deeply about grown up stuff. Okay. Like, okay. Can you give me an example of something that you like care more about than you did? I mean, just two weeks ago care more about. Yeah. Publicly, I care more about than two weeks ago. Yeah, the, what part of this like new rebrand, the new Griffin? Like experience. if you were going to say like, now I care about blank instead of Pokemon. Yeah, I would say sort of like uh, moisturizing. Okay. Moist- I'm huge on that shit now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I realized that I wasn't wet enough ever, basically. Mm. Are you gone into serums? Is- serums. Uh, I do. I have, a, I have a salve. I have an unguent that I apply mm, okay. uh, on every, every full moon. Um, and that really is keep what keeps me going. There's a lot, a lot. A lot of placenta in that one, but it keeps huh. it keeps it tight and very, very, very. Wait, are you damp. are you using plenty of Senta? Because I've been using plenty of Senta. I've been using plenty of Senta since the day I turned twenty nine years old. Yeah, I can um, tell. Because that's when things really start to drop off. But the plenty of Senta tightens, dampens, 
revives, revitalizes. Yeah. And even now I can tell I'm getting silly again. Like, yeah. you know what this I mean? Heart, it's yeah. work. It's work to elevate your brand. But like, you know, do you guys know what I'm saying? Absolutely, I feel out on man. a branch right now. No, I feel like my brand is solid and everybody is just really uh, in favor of it. I don't feel like yeah. there's any holes in my brand. Um, people often lift me up and say like, hey, Travis, I noticed that like you seem to be like the best and like most yeah, they're always the three and the most like just completely. I, I think the word is neurovergent. I think is what it is. You're just a real neurovergent guy. Yeah, that's um, what they definitely homeless. say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Justin, anything you want to say about your brand? Uh, How's no, your brand, mine's, Juice? Mine's, mine's pretty well fucked at this point. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I've done enough stuff where I don't know that I have much of a brand anymore. I feel like um, yeah. I've kind of ruined my... You know what it, I think it was? It what was, was it, Juice? It was becoming a notary public. Yeah, that's you think that? that yeah. really, oh, Juice, that's an inspiration for me. Oh, really? That for me, okay. that's like once I hit that point, yeah. I'm like once I'm a notary public and a sommelier, like then I'm I'm for real done. I have put my childish things way the fuck behind me now because I can sign government documents and shit. But I think if I may, in yeah, terms of what Justin is saying to us, uh, Griffin, what you're talking about is like a redirection of your brand. And what I think Justin is saying is his brand became so dispersed between everything that he's doing all at once. Oh, that I see. You cannot pin down one thing about Justin. It's like, oh, do you mean the guy who like is a notary public and is Count Donut? Like those two <laughs> yes. things oh, together. Wow, that's beautiful. Like Janus, the mask, it flips. Travis. Yes, but it's like if his mask had like 162 faces. I think, I think is the it, problem. But it's, you know what it is? I'm a modern Renaissance man. That's exactly sure. it. Oh, that's a good brand. That's a good brand. Ooh, the way up Renaissance there. Renaissance man. Extremely elevated. I like to think that my brand is like a uh, just lazy cult leader. Like I could do it, but who can be bothered? Like I've that's heard, kind of uh, what I'm going for. The beard has has been bad for my brand too. I think so. I think I, so in a major way. Okay, good. I, I just want to make sure. You know what it good is? Good for your face. It good looks for my yo, face. Yeah, great for your face. Brand. You know what? Yeah. I, it has allowed me to uh, sort of um, insert myself into certain dad circles that I would not oh, otherwise yeah, yeah, yeah. be welcomed into. Oh, buddy, because yeah, yeah. while they might be able to talk about sports and stuff, yes. if I see one of them's got a beard, I got Dang. an in. I'm in. Yeah. You want to talk about beards? Of course you do. It's all you think about. <laughs> it's, oh, just me? Okay. Good, 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 good. It's, but, way, but cheaper it's, than, it's way cheaper than buying an e-bike like I had to do to fit in with the cool yeah. city dads here in D.C. who do fucking wheelies Can and I, stunts. I don't get dads. Now we're not even doing the show anymore. No, we're um, not doing the show. We haven't talked oh, okay, in right. like half a month. Uh, what I don't get, because I realized this recently, like if you're like a full blown like dad joke dad, yeah. you gotta dye your hair to a different color because the dad jokes that this were like the number of people were like, I love your hair. And I'm like, thanks. I love it too, but I hate ruining pillowcases. Like the number of like just That's straight up. That's not so up, much a dad joke as much as it is. That's not so much true. a dad joke as much as it is just like a thing that is true and I think annoying about uh, hair color. I I'll give really you. I'll give, I'll, yeah, yeah, I like wore. Do I? I did a pumpkin carving contest that I was the MC for. Um, yeah. And Man, Justin, your life has just gotten off the. Is this season two of your life? And they're just like, <laughs> we got to ramp up the. This bits. does feel like that break in Battlestar when they come back three years later and it was like, this is the mirror. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why? Huh? Thank you, Travis. Um, I I uh I had a pumpkin pumpkin suit on like like Mr. Pumpkins d did yeah, but it yeah. wasn't a David Pumpkins costume. It was just a pumpkin suit, and people would be like, "I love your costume," and I would say, "Thanks." I had a wedding earlier today. Like that's oh, that's like, good. That's really good stuff, yeah. Juice. I like that. Should we it's, do the, the yeah, questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the show. I got yeah. a lot of like, I got some munch stuff, some munch related stuff to talk about. I'm um, excited. It's gonna be. A great is it episode. too late to change the name of the bit to Munch stuff? <laughs> I, I just like the way that it's uncomfortable in my mouth. That as long as we're elevating ears. the brand, this is Justin McElroy's Munch My Stuff. Uh, <laughs> no, it's his I, new wow. stuff. Huh. Huh. That's a Munch that's My Stuff. It can be like a old like PlayStation video game intro stinger. Yeah. Like, Munch My Stuff. And if it's a thing that makes you really mad, you can say like, uh, th "This huffs my munch." This right? really munches. Like, oh, this, this really munches my stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So let's do a question. I just had a baby last month, and all my friends and family say he's adorable. I obviously think so, too. However, due to all the baby hormones, I'm not sure my judgment can be trusted. 
What if I'm just surrounded by liars? How can I tell if my baby is really cute or if people are just lying to me? And that's from Cute Fused in Chicago. Travis, was there an image attached? Well, no, they specifically said they didn't want us to like be biased by an image because this isn't about our judgment on whether the baby is cute or not because how would they know to trust us? Right. This is about how can they trust. Oh, like they should know that I don't care. So yeah, like you can definitely I, I want most folks to know that when you ask my opinion on most things and you're not an immediate family member of mine, you're going to get the gosh, the gosh darn honest truth. Um, because I, I mean, you need to be mirrored. Don't we all? Oh, that's an mirrored. interesting point, Griffin, because I would have said I would lie to strangers and be honest with my family. And no, you've gone a different come on. Way to no, because I have to see you guys like all the, the all the time. And we work together like, all the yeah. time. So if I that's say true. like a bad thing to you about you that yeah. I felt for a long time, then like, uh oh, next recording time. Uh oh, you uh-oh, know, Skedios. but if I see a stranger with a busted looking baby, oh, then yeah. like. You know, I can let them know that, and then they can take the necessary steps to to beautify that baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, do the yeah, things yeah. That they step need up to the game, do, get a flipper in the there, baby's brand, yeah. hair extension, something. Elevate. Listen, uh, people lie. You know what? Who doesn't lie? Animals. If your oh. animals are reacting to your baby like like a Disney princess, birds landing on their shoulder, dogs want to lick their faces. I think it's safe to say that's a cute baby. Cute is a dog human. Will. Cute is a human reaction, though. Like we don't. I, if animals animals don't have like cute instincts. Like, uh, like, it was excuse for a baby me, cat. sir. Like it'd be uh, cute for a baby cat. Like your baby's cute for a baby cat, but not cute for yeah. a human. That's fair. Well, yeah, then why are, why are dogs and cats always putting on cute outfits, huh? If they don't have, like, cute instincts, huh? Think about that, Justin, yeah. before you, you talk. Actually, I'm hoisted by my own petard on that, yeah. Thank you. That's, yeah, that's fairly Um, I, th- I think all babies are <laughs> cute. Wrong. Like, they're, no, no, well, hold on. Even the ones that, <laughs> even the ones that aren't, tra- in, like, traditionally handsome babies, uh, they're still, like, they're really, really little, and they can't do they can't do anything. Right. And that part's great. I I agree that that's great. Their vulnerability definitely wins me. They're over. so little, and they fuck up nonstop, and they yeah, dude. just sh- like piss and shit like whenever they want to. That's like that's big cutie behavior, if you and, ask and me. F- Frankly, for me, and listen, I might be in the minority here, but I like me a Wallace Shawn looking baby. You know yeah, what I mean? It's I ideal that. for me. Yeah, yeah, I give love me a, it. Give me a baby with a tonsure on, on the top. Oh, oh yeah, I love oh, that. Oh, yeah. Tonsure. Just a little just a little shiny fontanelle right up there. Sometimes right. you see a baby trying too hard, and it's like, yeah, man, I get it. I You're get conventionally you. attractive for a baby. Listen. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow this one wide open. Um, you can't trust people. Yeah. To tell you the honest truth about your baby, there is only one force that we can turn to at times like this. It's capitalism. Well, here's okay. what I want you to do. I need you to take that baby mm-hmm. to Los Angeles, California. Oh, and you are going to put your money where your mouth is, and you're going to start pushing that baby. You need yes. okay. a baby agent. I yes. recommend yes. Baby Joel Beglin. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> he's just like our agent, but a baby. Okay, yeah, it's adorable. To to say like, I got to take my shot, and then you just. Start cranking it. If that baby's really cute, you're yeah. gonna start booking. And that is the only thing you can trust. Is your baby booking? Yep. Because this is also a good chance. Listen, your baby might be cute, right? Being think- cute is easy. But this is also a good chance to figure out is your baby driven? Right? Yes. Because it's like baby rock said, More it's about drive. Looks fade, drive, right. don't. It's about drive. It's about power. We yeah. feel hungry. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. We devour. <laughs> Yeah, it, that you got to start. But wait for the inevitable Full House yeah. reboot. Oh my! When God. they open oh, the roll coming. up for you know, baby, like what Michelle probably it'd probably be a dinosaur or something. <laughs> like yeah, you know, like yeah. whatever. When the, and then you come for that crown and let's see how cute your baby is. Let's God, see the, how right. cute. the the baby auditions for Fullest House are going to be. It's oh. going to be the Hunger Games. I have quintuplets. They can each work 15 minutes a day <laughs> and swap them out as needed. You Perfect. Know what? We can go through them. <laughs> work, work one to the, so they bad just, they're like, Ow. You can keep one. It's keep so one. tight. Keep one that's yours. We have a PA who runs in and swaps the baby out mid-scene. Yep. Mid-scene. No cuts. We have, a, we have one of these quintuplets we only use for lighting. So we just yeah. put the baby there so we don't have to get one of the really choice babies to stand out there at the time. <laughs> 
Yeah, we got a close up, baby. We got a we got a back of the headshot, baby. Uh, my name Don't is, worry. My name is Derek. I thought I was working with uh, Skyler today. Yeah, I'm Derek. I'm I'm just running your lines with you. They're gonna shoot me from behind the head back here. <laughs> it all yeah. looks. I look just like beautiful Skyler, everybody. Loves. I'm here for the two shots. Don't worry this about is it. The two shot stuff. <laughs> hey, let's bang through this. Okay, it's Martini well, o'clock. Let's see. We got a uh, some ADR here. Okay. Goo goo. Oh, let me Nailed take that it. again. That didn't feel natural. I'm a mocap for my brother Derek. <laughs> Please ignore uh, all the white balls glued to my face. It's hard for me too because I'm a baby and whatnot. Uh, I'm just gonna swing at this tennis ball, hang in front of me, pretend it's I don't know a fun toy that a beautiful baby would get. And boop, boop, boop. I and I did eat it one of the balls. Please call my mommy and my doctor. <laughs> Apologies to Robert Zemeckis that we have backed into. Uh, baby Herman from yeah. <laughs> Frame Roger yeah, Rabbit, yeah, just that character again. Yeah. Um, hey, can we go to the wizard's house? Yes. Oh, good. This one was sent in by Zach. Thank you, Zach. Well, I want to knock first. Oh, sure. Knock, knock, knock. Well, well the door just swung open, and a and a bat flew out. And the <gasps> bat is the wizard. And cool. this is the wiki how it's how to blow a kiss. How to blow Thank a kiss. You. Just because it's Halloween, it doesn't mean we can't have a little Valentine's Day in here. Don't you think? No, I, I think Halloween is like couples costumes and group costumes and friends uh, becoming lovers, lovers becoming wolves. <laughs> and I think <laughs> <it> is... <laughs> um, Blowing a kiss is a great way to show affection for someone in a lighthearted way. Remember to <laughs> lock eyes with the person while blowing them a kiss. Always choose an appropriate time to blow kisses and avoid making this gesture to anyone who might not like it, which I will say, statistically speaking, is everyone, if you were to take the statistics of yeah. the human population, which I think is sure. like eight some billion, right? Yeah, this point. And then you take out of that number the number of people that it's okay for you to blow a kiss to, it is so statistically insignificant that it is zero for all it's intents the, and it's purposes. The, it's the lottery ticket of human interaction. There's Correct. just like once in a while, once in a great while, it yeah. might hit a little bit. And that's probably because the person thought you were someone else that kind of looks yeah. like you. I blew Can a I, kiss. I, to, I blew a kiss to my baby today because he clocked me while I was taking Henry to school and he was at the window and I gave him a little and then I thought like, what was that right? <laughs> yeah. Did I do that? What did he look? Did. Like? What what kind of look did he give back to you? He's. I mean, he smiled. He loves. He really. He is loved a big it. Fan okay, of he me, but he lived. Was he it loved a smile it. like, "Oh, Dad, that wasn't the time for that." Yeah, it was pretty fucking condescending, actually. Now that yeah. I'm thinking about it. Um. So anyway, making the I'm, gesture. I'm hung up on, though on the uh, lighthearted gesture, and now I'm wondering if there's like a way that one could dramatically blow a kiss, like either in a threatening way yeah. or like this means something kind of, you know, like when you see in like mafia movies and they get that like kiss of death, could yes. you do that with blowing a kiss where it's just like, hey, you, nah. No, like, I don't oh, think Oh no, that it's it the done. black spot. What? I, th I don't think that gets it done. I don't think this is a lighthearted, if you take lighthearted at face value to mean like something that's just kind of like, woo, playful and then a little, little poof, a little poof of smoke. Uh, a, a, a blowing a kiss is not that because I'm gonna be thinking about that all day. If someone Correct. does that to me, but let's make sure we're doing it right, please. Um, wait until you are a short distance away from the person. Blowing a yeah. kiss is a nonverbal show of affection that works best when you're a short distance away from someone, e.g. across the room. If you blow with someone a kiss at close proximity, it may seem odd and unnecessary. That's true. Some cute, cu yeah. some close quarters combat. Like, but what's the farthest? That's such a vague. That's a like, great. That's the next question. Is like I feel like I could three sixty no scope my baby with a remote smoocher, like yeah. from from across like a crowded theater. And yeah. I feel like oh, I see. Have I think done that. one end of a end zone to end zone of a football field, clear line of sight. Yes, I could. I could get them. The line of sight is important. It um, can't be full of people, right? Because then, I, unless I can stand up like on one of those bandstands that, like you know, uh, that the drum line leaders use and stuff. Like, sure. if I could get that, I think I could get them at a distance. You don't want but. it to hit someone else. No, God, no! Are you kidding me? Yeah. In this economy, <laughs> this one's important. Lock eyes with the person you're blowing a kiss to. Making direct eye contact with blowing a kiss lets the person know you're sending it. To them, look at the person until they look back at you and smile when they meet your gaze. Hold that eye contact while you blow them a kiss. If they break eye contact before you make the gesture, wait until they look back at you to try again. You just sit there with your note. hand in front of your mouth, like come on. Yeah, come on. Here, it's come like on. a oh, so it's like um, it's like tipping at the deli. 
Mm-hmm. You gotta wait. Yeah, they have you gotta to wait see it. until they see. They gotta wait till they're looking like, "Hello, here you go." Yeah, um, I can't think of anything worse than somebody leaving you hanging on a kiss blow. That's gotta be a tough. That's gotta be a tough one. The, to just turn away in the middle, like I'm like, mm, and they turn away in the middle of it, and then yeah. it's like someone else sees me blowing a kiss to nobody to a ghost well it's just like playing catch with someone without that eye contact you blow the kiss when they're not looking hits them right inside of the head they're down I, they're, I, down. I mean, they're a, unconscious i just had a freaking grand idea if awesome. you're listening to this show and uh-huh. you see us in the real world just blow us a sweet kiss mm. wow that's if, interesting if you blow us a sweet kiss big, our way big, bold I, move. And, I, and i clock it no it's not bold no one well, both of you otherwise. to include your two brothers who didn't get a vote in this new idea. Yeah, I feel like, and this is one of those things that is like the secret on the show, but for bad. But for bad, like if there was a secret that was for bad, that was yeah. like when you say it, the bad thing is going to happen. Now it's like the it's like the. I think it's, that it's would make what, me feel pretty cool. I mean, that don't just start indiscriminately, but I'm like, consi- yeah. I'm saying. Here's my consent to just like blowing me a kiss anytime you see me. And I'll Here's know that, Justin's like, consent. I'll know your whole story. Yeah. I'll get it. And then just be like, you'll be you'll be completely comfortable knowing that I've just like I caught it with my hand, I smooshed it on my cheek. Thank Don't. you so much. Now, here's what I will say, Justin, from that gesture. It's just occurred to me that there is not a, I guess maybe a thumbs up, but like blowing a kiss seems Intimate in a way of like kissing on the cheek would be, yeah. As opposed to like a high five. Can we long distance high five as oh, a thing that, to replace do blowing it, a kiss? Travis, look at yourself. Do it again, Travis. Stop. Oh yeah, no, stop. I did it. No, nope. I did look it, and I felt it. Like no, I'm not it doing it bad. again it's ever bad. again in my half life. A, half of a high five is bad. <laughs> bad. It's, it's not great. bad. It's a bad. Look. Historically it speaking, home, not while you're driving. No, historically speaking, not great. Not a great look. Half a high five. How do you guys receive a? Kiss blow. You catch it. You put it in your pocket. Catch, you catch it. it in your pocket. See, I well, like to. I like to make my kiss bust up because when they blow me a kiss, I'll grab it out of the air and I'll fucking eat it. Oh like, my oh, god, that's a good one. It's a sweet little candy. Yeah, it's like a, no. I get like I'm like a beast. I'm like <laughs> like I, I I it's filling me up. Good. Kiss your palm. Slowly bring the palm to your hand to your mouth. Touch your yeah, palm lightly with your lips. I don't think that's right. It's fingertips. That feels it's, it's not palm for me. Nah. That's this is where I got fucked up when I blew the kiss to Gus today. Is I I did it very very much on the fingertips. I yeah. rolled it off there. I rolled it See, off. Oh, there. now that's it. Oh, Griffin, I'm sure we'll get to this. But when you I hear kiss blow kiss, with the fingers. I well, I don't blow. I'm sure there are people who whoo and wo- and like waft it off. But how the kiss like, supposed to? Your hand. If you don't send it on its merry way, you're yeah. How the kiss is supposed to get to them? Well, I'm gotta, sending it. People are gonna think you got some delicious marinara on there. Mm-hmm. Just clean up. I'm I'm sending it right with my energy, but I'm not blowing. Hey? Travis, oh, again, that's interesting. If you look at your kiss, I know motion, Justin. It's <laughs> not <laughs> great. I, I know Justin. I can feel it too. <laughs> historically, mm-hmm. the way you're doing your hand with flinging your kisses looks bad. Historically. That's yeah, why I'm Trav, doing it I backhanded just, now. And so, yeah, <laughs> maybe course. throw maybe throw him a grounder, Trav. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Wow. A slider right between the legs. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it in a little envelope and I'll seal it and I'll put it in an imaginary and then they can yeah. open it and it's safe that way. Uh, position your hand after kissing your palm. Place your hand flat under your mouth. You, we know this one. You got to have a stable firing platform. But here's step five. Blow away the imaginary kiss. This motion will signify you blowing the kiss to its intended target. Do this gesture slowly to create emphasis. We're gonna make a meal of it. I think that's the thing that's most threatening because if I was close to that person, right, and we have a relationship like- Physically or emotionally? uh, Both. You know, if it was someone where we had a relationship where we kissed each other on a regular basis, I would feel comfortable kissing them. What I would not do is kiss them and then blow against their lips to cement that kiss in there. Okay, Travis. Like a kiss on the cheek. So like- I'm sending the kiss. You know that that's not like my kiss is it. like a butterfly. It flies on its own. Me blowing on it, it's just gonna fuck up its trajectory. That's crazy. It can go anywhere. That's crazy. That's crazy. You're crazy. Yeah, your cra- your kiss sense. can't fly Stupid. on its own. Make my sure kiss per- is a fucking butterfly. I don't know be- about you guys. Lead balloon kisses. Sorry, <laughs> your kisses suck. <laughs> be mindful about your cultural surroundings. This is good. Huh. Hey, I hey, think hey, in hey, general. Hey, hey, all wiki, however, step one. <laughs> like, yeah. step one, keep your grades up. Step two, you <laughs> might as well have your cultural surroundings. <laughs> surroundings. 
Uh, is blowing a kiss is a gesture that's well understood in North American culture, but not necessarily in others. In Brazil, for instance, the gesture for, of bringing your fingers to your mouth as you kiss them signifies the enjoyment of a meal and not a sign of affection. This, to me, seems like that's still okay. Like, yeah, if you're in worse. Brazil and you blow someone a kiss... Someone will look at you and be like, they must have eaten something very delicious lately. Yeah. That's not so bad. If it was like, it, you, you wish that their, you know, that their their whole family was sick or something like that. Like, that's what this, this is a cursing, this is a cursing gesture. And I you. think as we've established earlier on in the segment, there's definitely some gestures you could make that are universally unpleasant. Yeah. Right? That everyone's probably, like, there's no confusing that for anything else. Choose an appropriate time and place. Yeah, I mean, don't yeah. get blowing Not a funeral. A, blowing a kiss is often seem, is seen as a flirtatious gesture, which can be problematic in the workplace. Yes. In fact, I would say it can be problematic in a workplace, any workplace. <laughs> or people are working. Any saying... workplace. You don't have to work at the workplace. If you are at the workplace- <laughs> Then it's not good, and you also the place. What's the name of the thing that connects all the workplaces outside the world? Don't yeah. do it there either, because that one can also like somebody might be working. The only nearby. place not to do it is, well, I mean, unless I'm there, which I've already consented to blow yeah. all the kisses you like. Right. Other than that, just like not inside a workplace and not outside a workplace. Yeah. Other than that, those two situations. I, I think. There's two people I can think of that I would feel comfortable doing this to, and neither of them uh, are you guys or my wife. So my friends Bob and Bradbury, I think Bob and Bradbury, we could be like, hey, buddy, what's up? How's it going? Like, and be very comfortable it's cool. with just exchanging it's cool. that. Like, it's, it's like a, a cool, cool thing. Yeah. That would be like a cool, feeling very hip way to do it. I would not make a show of it. I think there's something in the show of like, Mwah! right, where it's just like, you fucking. But if I mean, you're just like, hey, man, Stay classy or whatever. I think I could pull that off. I, I think do, I could do that. I do it to my little stinkers. That's oh, it. Oh, yeah? Yep. I've started doing this thing, uh, and it like it makes me feel, once again, like uh, a cool dad. Where like drugs. I'll make a... Drugs. <laughs> They're awesome. And I put my hat on back once I talk to my kids about how great they are. <laughs> it works great. Um, hey, kids, let's talk about drugs. Have you tried it? <laughs> you, got them? you got any? You know where I can get them? Where I will make a joke. Uh, f like for my three year old, like maybe for lunch we should have a bowl of farts and dot last. But I wink at BB as if to say, like, you know, we wouldn't really eat farts. And she like looks at me and nods, and I'm like, yeah, man, we're cool. I want to yeah. bring back the wink. Is that something yes. that we can like reincorporate? No, like, a wink? for sure no. not. No, not damn it. Not either really. I thought we could, but you know what? You guys are right. Um, and also uh, the last tip here is make sure the person won't be uncomfortable, which like well. should have been. First of all, the first tip, also impossible. Also, uh, I would just err on the side of caution, which is to say don't blow a kiss unless it's to one of your little stinkers. Uh, or, or to someone, a dog. Or someone you have told, I'm going to blow a kiss at you. Is that, do you mind? Then that could be okay, right? I think reference? you would have to you would have to phrase it like at some point I would like to try to blow a kiss at you. That's cool, and I'm totally fine if we do it. And then you're like, never do that again. Are yeah. you willing to try this exchange at least once to see how we both feel? Let me. Ask I don't you know that I I couldn't give blanket consent to. Yeah, it, yeah, like yeah. Justin as, has. as we are introducing this into the sort of like social consciousness of our cultural surroundings. Um, we have an opportunity here to kind of like set the rules because we're on the cutting edge. We're pioneers. Yes. Absolutely. So like uh, first order of business for me, we've, t we've discussed technique, right? Like tips yeah. of the fingers, you got to blow, um, stable firing platform, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Big thing for me, n sound. Is it oh, necessary? Yeah. Uh, is, it mm. is it creepier for me to go, or is it creepier for me to go, I think silent is weird. Well, but see, then we're getting into sign language is tubbing. That is thank the you. Chin. Yeah, That's shit. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah and I gotta... think it's an inch lower with the fingers and no sound. Where I yeah. think the only way to make it clear that what I'm saying is I'm kissing you and I'm blowing it at your face is like, Mwah. Okay. And then the receiving end of it, I think just a nod. Just like. Or a gentle yes. touch of the cheek, like a breeze. Well, is no, 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 no. Because I don't know. Because I wouldn't kiss you on the cheek. Do you know what I mean? You like, wouldn't kiss you on the cheek? I'm your brother. Nah, I wouldn't kiss I wouldn't kiss you hairy boys on your hairy cheeks. Oh, ever. it's lovely. It's like nuzzling it's a big not, bear. It's not lovely. I'm not going to kiss your guys' hairy cheeks. Stop it. Oh, boy. Stop it. 
So like, I don't want to address, I don't want it to be, I don't want it to land on me. Like, I don't want to, I don't want it to, to land on me and me be the one that put it there. Do you know what I mean? Could so just a, a knowing look and like a cat, like just curl your fingers at a knot. Like I want something of like, it's been received. Oh, that's cool. That can be right. like a cool gesture of just like, you sort of like, uh, like you're David Bowie with the, the oar. Oh yeah, I've just welcomed like, to this. I've got the kiss now. And you yeah. can kind of like play with it and roll it around your fingers like a coin. Oh yeah. And do, a tr do tricks with the kiss. That's oh, good. Oh, I like that. Just a catch and a nod. What do you think Justin's this. thinking about? I don't know, man. David Bowie? No, <laughs> I, I think. I had to guess. So there's a contact juggling? That's settled on blowing kisses. That's all done. We've weighed in on that. I think it's time to treat ourselves with a quick trip to the money zone. Can I tell you guys something messed up? What? The oh, whole I time I was in the UK, I didn't receive one letter. What? No one sent me Stink. any letters as I bounced from castle to castle, just cleansing them of every wrongdoing that's ever been done there. I didn't receive one stinking letter from either of you. Were you well, sending I, them? No. Not, you know, I, I, I was going to Travis, but I actually don't have the time to go to the post office right now. Oh, Justin. You That's the only place idiot. where stamps are, so. <laughs> Whoa, what? Just, sorry, what? Oh, sorry, sorry, Justin. It's a, idiot is a, use they, a word they use over in the UK to mean like somebody who doesn't know something. You might not have heard it before. Oh, And because okay. you don't know about stamps.com, uh, which is this new invention uh, where you can get stamps and postage and stuff through the internet. Oh, have you heard yeah. about this? Okay, did, yeah. Have you heard it? Yeah. Did you hear about yeah. that? Do you did put, you hear about that, wanker? Do you just take a picture of the stamps on the screen with your phone and then? No, Justin, you bollocks head. You go. <laughs> you bollocks. Sorry, stamps. the two big ones for them are idiot and bollocks head. Yeah, yeah. Chris Brain. Chris Brain. Chris Brain. Uh, spotted dick. You go to stamps.com, right? And it's the one stop shop for all your shipping and mailing needs. You get access to USPS and UPS services. You need to run your business right from your computer. No lines, no traffic, no hassle. Especially important during the upcoming holiday season. Absolutely. When uh, maybe you run a small business and you're shipping things out to people, or maybe you're just like sending out a lot of uh, Christmas cards or gifts or whatever, stamps.com can help you get that done. Uh, rates are constantly changing. With stamps.com switch and save feature, you can easily compare carriers and rates so you know you're getting the best deal every time. This holiday season, trade late nights for silent nights. And get Ooh. started with stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code MYBROTHER, all one word, for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code MYBROTHER, all one word. Brands like it when we have a little fun with so them, true. right? So I hope so. 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 so can we talk about trading late nights for silent nights? With yes, please. Does stamps.com offer a completely silent way of getting my shit from point A to point B. I know Correct. they offer a quick and affordable and convenient way of doing it, but I do not, I am not convinced, stamps.com, that your service is going to make my evenings any any quieter. Oh, <laughs> uh, so Griffin, actually, it's buried deep in the contract, so be careful, this is why it's important you read everything. Yeah. Um, when you sign up with stamps.com, it does require at least one night a week you watch A Quiet Place and act it out. Oh, and wow. At home and not Scare making out. any sound. Now, I've never seen A Quiet Place, except that I know that people are really quiet in it, and I think Jim from The Office is in there pulling faces constantly. Uh, yeah. And you could also probably just get by watching The Office on mute if that's what you yeah. wanted to do instead. They they don't have any way of checking up on you. That's yeah. what I found out. You guys see A Quiet Place? What's it about? Uh, have not seen that one yet. Um, yeah, it's one of those movies where you have to pay the de dead kid tax at the top of it mm, in order no, to enjoy you. the rest of the film. Yeah, I wish there was a website for just for that. There's one it about whether is. or not dogs die. I, I really like that, because that yeah. could really soil a film for me. Yeah, um, like I don't have a dog. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. You know what I do have? What do you have? A fresh look all okay. the time. Yeah. How do I do it? A lot of people ask me, know. what's my secret? I'm a busy guy. You know, what, what's my secret? I have the clothes sent to me. I don't go to the Whoa. store. The clothes come here. You know when your clothes, you put them on, it fits just right. It's like, this is for me. Yes. I call that, this is actually with the, the stitch fix feeling. 
You came Ooh. up with that? That's good, dude. Came up with that. Thank you. You get clothes that fit you at a budget you're comfortable with, styles you love. You're working with a personal stylist that you give them your sizes, your taste, your budget, and they're going to send you a box of clothing items that are like, this is for you. You're going to love yep. these. And you will. You open it up. You put it on. You're like, oh, my gosh. I love it. If you, that doesn't qualify for the items, rare, fair. You put them back in the bag. You f- ship them back. No postage. No fees. No returns. No problem. No. Can hassle. I tell you my my favorite thing, Justin? Oh, I'd love to. This it, Trav. happens from time to time where I'll get something from Citrix, and it's something I would not have picked out in a store. Yeah. But I put it on, and I'm like, ooh, this fits me perfectly and looks great on me. I never would have known this was my thing, but my stylist has like geared it towards yep. me and pushed that a little bit, and I'm like, yeah, this is a new style that I love. My wardrobe needs have changed, and so I drop back on my Stitch Fix to like a like quarterly fix, uh, which works for me. And my schedule. Uh, but also, like, I find that I've learned how to dress myself because Ooh. of Stitch Fix and the many, now, many, many clothes oh, they have sent my way. Getting an adult in the room to say, hey, this hey. is what you should do. Yeah. And it's also nice to have an adult there to teach you how, like, the buttons work. Because yes. sometimes you're like, I can't figure out, is this yes. a hook and eye situation? Yes. What are we doing? Yeah. And my stylist walks me through dressing myself. And it's very Stitch lovely. Stitch Fix is like the, when you reach for something that you think will look good on you, but nobody else does. Yeah. Stitch Fix is at the store when you don't have any help. Stitch Fix is like the hand that reaches out and smacks your hand. Says no, it's yeah. not for you. <laughs> this isn't. And it's, yeah. That's it's, not yours. And it's the only rough part was when Stitch Fix kicked in the door to my house and took away all my cargo sh- shorts and graphic yeah. tees with Stewie Griffin on them. Yeah, uh, and, and you they, said stuff in those in those cargo shorts which and like, in the Stewie yeah. t-shirts yeah, because they have pockets and I kept all my Beyblades in those in in the Stewie <laughs> Griffin them. t-shirts. Anyway, that's the only bad thing is they'll take your cargo pants right out of your your house. And also, if you have any of the Family Guy guys, it's over. Right now, Stitch Fix is offering our listeners $20 off their first fix at stitchfix.com slash my brother. That's stitchfix.com slash my brother for $20 off today. Stitchfix.com slash my brother. I'm Lisa Hannawalt. And I'm Emily Heller. Wow, Emily, we've been doing this podcast for 10 years. I know, but hey, don't worry. You can jump in at literally any episode and hear us talk about some of our favorite stuff, caterpillars becoming butterflies. Martha Stewart flying around in a private jet full of trees. Yes, you heard me right, trees. Neighbors becoming enemies. Just kidding. (laughs) Whatever messed up stuff we can find on Wikipedia. Our impeccable taste in everything from dogs to TV shows to bodily functions. And horses. Lots and lots of horses. Come for our horned up rants about the world. Stay for the catchy theme songs. You might not learn anything, but we're a good hang. Baby Geniuses. Every other week on MaximumFun.org. Baby Geniuses. Tell us something we don't know. Hi, I'm Jesse Thorne, America's Radio Sweetheart. And I'm Jordan Morris, Boy Detective. Our comedy podcast, Jordan Jesse Go, just celebrated its 15th anniversary. It was a couple months ago, but we forgot. Uh, yeah, completely. Our, our silly show is 15 years old. That makes it old enough to get its learner's permit. And almost old enough to get the talk. Wow, I hope you got the talk before then. A lot of things have changed in 15 years. Our show's not one of them. We're never changing and you can't make us. Jordan, Jesse, go the same forever at MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Dun, 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 dun. As yeah. promised. Yep. I want to munch Scott. I want to munch stuff. Welcome to Munch Squad. This podcast within a podcast profiling the latest and greatest in brand eating. I am so excited to be back. Obviously, things have been happening so fast. Just in general, like mineral or? Oh, uh, pour one out super quick. I I don't want to do a story about this, but the McRib is, guys, on its farewell tour. No. Um, yeah, it's back for one brief moment. And, I th- and I'm like, why now? You know what I mean? Like, why now? And are you really going to get rid of it uh, right now? And then I- Do you guys th- ever wonder where it goes when it's not here? I think about that all the time, Trav. Back to pigs. Um, the pigs get them. <laughs> get them. <laughs> Pigs get to keep them. Keep the ribs. Keep your ribs, P. We don't need them. 
Yes, <laughs> these are yours now. Oh no, the clown is here for our ribs. No, keep your ribs. <laughs> Do not, no, children. Keep, keep your ribs, children. Keep your ribs today. <laughs> today, um, nobody dies. So I just want to tell you guys real quick what's happening out in the world. Uh, Firehouse has released the prime rib steak sub. That's um, where they go. The they five star flavor. So this five star flavor comes from being seared and then cooked to perfection via sous vide. Thanks oh my God! I know they use. Wait, is it, isn't this a fast casual restaurant? Yes, they sous vide them and then let yeah, it so sit. Just in kick hot it here water. for four hours while we well, bathe. I'm sure your they sandwich. started before the customer gets there, Griffin. I don't think it's sous vide to order. Yeah, that's well, fair. Um, the, now, why sous vide? Well, let's check Good in question. with uh, Berthelon, a Michelin star trained chef and a maître cuisinier de France who's been a pioneer in sous vide since 1989. Chef Gerard. <laughs> Hello, is this Chef Gerard Bertholon? Uh, oui. Uh, it's Firehouse Subs. You want to cook up a lot of these sloppy <laughs> boys for us or what? Ah, uh, oui. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, he says, water is the best medium to transfer heat because of how precise it allows you to be. By searing Firehouse Subs prime rib to capture flavor and then cooking it for 12 hours, sous vide. Guests receive an incredibly tender and flavorful piece of beef, just as good as they would get in any steakhouse in the world. Yeah, yeah <laughs> man. Bertillon, drunk on his own power. <laughs> now, I also say, uh, Firehouse Subs, I don't know how much you paid this man to say this. I could have told you the same thing for like 50 bucks. I would have done it. I've been sous vide for like six years now. I could have told you the same. It's good. The water it's good, it up real good, yeah. man. It's, it's pretty it's, where's good. Where's my money? I I don't know. I've been in the back room of plenty of fast casual restaurants enough to know that it's going to be sort of a spooky thing to have back there. Yeah. It's going yeah, to so yeah. just have like this specimen in floating in a fucking back to tank, just like waiting for you to, to just sear it and slice it up. I, I'm, I think that that would give a sort of, but it's Halloween. Yeah, it's Halloween. Now, see, I thought you were going to say a spooky thing because basically you uh, just have a vat of scalding hot liquid sitting around oh, uh, for people hot. who are maybe at best phoning it in. Yeah, I mean, they're probably uh, keeping that bad boy like, what, one, 129, 130 tops? No, I wouldn't want that on my... On my it wouldn't feel good, but grabbers. it's not scalding. So, so, that, so that was a story that I noticed like because I was thinking a lot about like meat. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Th so I noticed that one that steak that that steak and cheese sandwich that that uh, that they are doing the prime rib steak sub, and then I noticed this is always in the same week. Roy Roger says they're bringing back the steak and cheese sandwich. Huh. Oh wow! Uh, steak and cheese uh, f f features thin slices of beef steak with American cheese and grilled onions on a delicious six inch roll. Yeah. Um, Roy Rogers Restaurants, the Western themed quick service restaurant chain based in Frederick, Maryland, is announcing the return of a highly anticipated limited time menu offering in uh, introducing a new side and launching its gift card promotion just in time for the holidays. Yes, the holidays are oh. here, folks. And the, this time, the festive season has been rung in by the steak and cheese sandwich from Roy Rogers. Quote, the steak and cheese is always a fan favorite. And we're happy to bring it back for our royalists. You know, customer. That's the senior director. That feels of like that's something Roy else. Rogers. That feels like that word means something else. No, nope, right? so that what it means is people that love Roy Rogers. We okay. know customers will love the addition of our new mozzarella sticks and marinara dipping sauce as well. They pair great as a side or as a snack on the go. <laughs> we, I got a lot of errands to run today. Give me some <laughs> mozz sticks. If you're a fast casual restaurant and you announce something that has existed for. 500 years i think that it should just be i think the press statement should just be like one to two sentences hey guys it's yeah. us roy rogers we do mozzarella sticks now come in, <laughs> you come probably in, thought we already did but come we, have them yeah we get that it seems like something we would have done before now i like the uh, the they just casually threw in there a uh, scenario that would imagine like uh one last present took behind the tree let's see what it is <gasps> a roy rogers gift card thanks so much, dad ah oh, you're welcome son so this is the second press release. Uh, this is how this one closes. This is the perfect time of year for food that provides comfort and reminds us of home. Huh. These seasonal limited time offerings do just that and are delicious additions to the menu. Royalists can now give the gift of high quality burgers, beef, and chicken with our holiday gift card promotion. The perfect mm -hmm. gift or stocking stuffer this holiday season. Mm. Okay, so we really are. And then I, then I, I just... Drive on over by Quiznos press yeah. release no, outlet. No way. 
Quiznos prime rib sub makes their long awaited return return what? announced the same week as these other stories. Is it, is it okay? Is this all connected to the McRib retirement? This is what I don't, I can't figure out. Is it, is it, they, are, they are searching. This is guys, this is House of the Dragon. I haven't seen it, but I think this is what it is yeah. where they're searching, they're vying, politicking to discover the heir apparent to the McRib kingdom. And I, I, I it, this is thrilling for me. This is super exciting. Three years after its last appearance, the popular prime rib subs are back for guests to indulge in the comforting and satisfying flavors of slow roasted prime rib as the holiday season draws near. Are you yes. shitting me? So are this both is both of you all trying to be like the perfect holiday food? A is messy cheesesteak sandwich. <laughs> okay, so sandwich. this is I looked it up, right? Because it stuck in my mind. Uh, prime rib is like a thing that for like many is like a traditional Christmas dinner thing, right? <gasps> but this isn't that, is right? That. This is a steak hoagie. <laughs> it's yeah. it's steak hoagie. not that. It may be bursting with with flavor and dry rub with black pepper, garlic, and salt. Don't sure. brag about putting salt on it. Yeah, <laughs> like, Wait, we put <laughs> three of the most basic things yeah. you could put on something: salt, salt pepper, is, and garlic. Listing salt is an admission that you didn't put any other flavors on it. <laughs> right, you would have said anything other than salt. And get this: we cooked it. Yeah, <laughs> like how oh, cool, yeah. man! Great, it's great. got a creamy horseradish sauce. The prime Italian is made with slow roasted prime rib, provolone cheese, sautéed onions, GRD. Uh, Giardiniera? Giardiniera? Giardelli. It's the peppers. Giardelli. It's like the, yeah. the peppers. Paul Giamatti. Green, green peppers and marisa. For many, the holidays, this is a quote that is in a different press release than the last one. For many, the holiday season is an ideal time to cozy up with indulgent foods and get together with family, surrounding themselves with comfort and familiarity, says Mike. Geisman, Vice President of Culinary Innovation, we invite our guests to experience those same feelings at Christmas. When they, when they walk, Travis, that's the next. <laughs> no! <laughs> experience those same feelings when they walk into a Quiznos. Yeah. If you experience the feeling of being home when you yeah. walk into a Quiznos, that's not good. That's bad. That's not no, something that's I feel comforted wrong. and surrounded by family at this Quiznos. If you work at the Quiznos and it's like, these are my people, like, this is my family, that's fine. I would I mean, say though, even I would then, say even that's <laughs> not great. <laughs> even you should then. know it's a found found families are huge with us, and maybe your family is at Quiznos. That's fantastic. I'm saying if you eat a sandwich and you're like, I'm home, <laughs> like that's probably less than great. But those, I'm saying especially as drunk. more and more Quiznos across the country are closing, yeah. and you're like you're like uh, chasing your home from state my, to state. Yeah, my home is my home in Huntington on Fourth Avenue. My Home is now a place <laughs> where people go to drink wine and paint things. That's in my house. In your I house. Live. And they didn't even ask you. They are, they are, what is it, paint and, paint and sip? Maybe, I don't know. Some, yeah, some yeah, computation yeah, yeah. of that. Uh, I just, I can't, I, I guess it's true what they say, that the supply chain is really just dictating all this stuff. Like, yeah. it's clearly somebody backed up too many, too many We beefs. got a lot of rib. We got a lot of beefs. <laughs> Everyone we got some get thin slice. slices of shit. <laughs> Tell them it's for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them it's a Christmas delight. My money's on Quiznos. I think it would be fun if Roy Rogers won. Like if Roy Rogers became the big the big one, just because in, like in the rib why skirmishes, does, why does in the in the yeah in the rib crisis of 2022, 2023, Because let's be honest, it's gonna we're not gonna whip this thing in the next two months. No, 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 no. Oh, um, boy. how are we doing? You want another question? Yeah, yeah. Hi, brothers. I'm faced with a moral quandary. As you've come to the right place, our school is holding elections for student council. Ooh. And two of my friends are running. I've already voted for them. But this morning on the quad, there was a guy who was campaigning by handing out mini gourds from a massive burlap sack to people who promised to vote for him. The gourds huh. are really cute, and I want to have one. Is it morally right to lie to this poor man just for a free calabash squash? And that's from Squash Squanderer in New York. Can I just say, it feels like a long way to go to get a vote 
when you could just like buy a bag of like mixed mini chocolate bars, especially now yeah. during a Halloween season, just hand those out, man. You know, people love candy. You know what it costs you like five dollars? Where are you getting so many gourds that you can hand them out as a favor? It seems like a huge expense. You know, huge. I'm in I'm in politics country now. Yeah. Where it all where it all happens. Yeah. Um and I will say that a lot of, like, a surprising amount of stuff here is, like, a lot of the pro- the political processes are lubricated with, like, fun size Mr. Good Bars. Yeah, man. Crackles, um, Hershey's with the almond. Uh, that's it. That greases a lot of the wheels because they yeah, can't man. get enough of this stuff. Well, and the secret is you do a special dark and a good bar at the same time. Oh, fuck off. That's too now much. Now we're talking. This is a, this is a crime. What this person is huh. doing is a crime. It's a oh, wild. right, Justin. Justin's been like Toby Ziggleraying around for a while now, and he thinks he's Mr. Politics Listen, and Ethics. If I can pay people for votes, uh-huh. yeah, enough said. Okay. Listen, if it was legal, you can't do this. It's a crime. Now that being said, to hand out gourds, be, you you don't want to be you don't want to be mixed up in this endeavor. You can't pay people for votes. That said, if they got a delicata over there. Let me get, no. let me come by. I can't get. I don't have a Trader Ricks. A yeah. Trader. No, that's the. Yeah. that's the werewolves in London. The Trader Sam's. Nope. You'll Disney get there. World. Trader Joe's. Yes. I don't have a Trader Joe's around here. I don't have a Jungle Gyms. You know what I mean? Like I gotta sure. get my Delicato when people go out of town. They're like, "Can I get you a souvenir?" Like, yeah, bring me back some Delicato, yeah, delicato squash. squash from the squash. From the Trader good. Joe's. You can eat the rind. Thank you. Yeah, but Travis, Justin, I'm sorry. That every night. Oh I yeah, know constantly. You did up until oh, now. constantly, man. At this point, I'm more delicate of squash than I am, man. But here's the question, Justin: In your mind, handing someone a tiny decorator of seasonal gourd is paying them for votes. Yes. Yeah, in Trump. what? Yes. In what world can you use a tiny decorative gourd as currency? And please point me in the direction of that world, because I'm a very uh, rich man. Uh, uh, pumpkin Town. <laughs> oh, good point. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's you can't. You, you don't want to get me- mixed up in this business. This is I'll, dark stuff. This I'll is say, dark stuff. but it sounds like to me you have two friends running for student council, competing. It sounds like yeah. against each other. They, they said they already voted for them. So I well doubt fraud that's, uh, clearly. There might be different positions. Oh, that's happen. another good point. Yeah, maybe it's not fraud. Did you but guys... you can, but regardless, you can feign ignorance and be like, "Sorry, I thought you guys were competing against each other, and I could not choose, and I got this cutie little gourd, this sweet little squash outside, and I told the guy I vote for him because I couldn't pick between you two. It's not fair. So I voted. For, I voted. I voted third party for this one. I tell you what, guys. Here's the beautiful thing. I don't know if you guys know this. You can tell anybody you're voting for anything, they can't check. They can, you can be like, hey, I'll definitely vote for you. And unless that guy loses by like one vote and then breaks into like the student council offices or whatever, it goes through each thing and it's like, wait a minute, it was Todd. Todd took one of my gourds and they didn't vote for me. I'm going to ruin Todd's life. Maybe, maybe that might happen in my new YA novel that I'm working on. Please don't copy this concept. <laughs> I've said it out loud. Everybody, forget what I said. Forget what I said. This is I mine. Mean, it is Kevin Costner's swing vote, and that's sure. fun that you reinvented that film. This time I'm calling mine Gord to Death. Yeah, um, so, yeah, thank you. That's really get out of Splumhouse. That's good stuff. Um, speaking of like the pol- the politics thing, uh, um, did you all did you all see that? Um, God, I'm so delighted. Did you guys see the attack ad? That Hell was yeah, I did, dude. Griffin, did you see it? Yeah, oh yeah, I they saw made- the attack ad. I did, got do you, sent it. Do you they realize made a, that someone they made a lot of good points. They made a lot of good points. Um, I don't want to talk too much about it, but I do want to say there's a, the front of it is just this picture of gas prices with Joe Biden like good gas prices and Sydney's like I love it. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I had no idea. I've known Sydney now for decades. I had no idea she had such influence over the national gas prices. Here is no my, idea. Here's what I wanted to, to say, though, is that this mailer does include the phrase that is on a political mailer in the world, the Biden slash McElroy agenda. The Biden That's McElroy agenda. really, 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 <laughs> really strong. That up. That's not something we made up for this show. That's yes. someone was like the Biden McElroy agenda. Very, the, very good. 
The only way that that makes sense is if it's like the Biden slash McElroy agenda. And then underneath it in bullet points is leaving a ticket at will call at every live show they've ever done in Washington, D.C. for Joe Biden, hoping he'll show up. That's the only McElroy slash Biden agenda I know of yeah. that exists on this planet. I Yeah. I Do you know how bad you have to be at your job to not be because of who Sydney is married to? To not be able to cook up a very, 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 very bad mailer. <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Sydney, There's oh, listen, so we get much. It. We love Sydney. You love Sydney. Everybody loves Sydney. This clown, this absolute yeah. <laughs> degenerate that she is You see this to. guy in the pumpkin suit who said he just came from a wedding? He's like right there with her. Do you see this man in a chili suit who's str- in, a, in a pumpkin suit who's got chili all over his hands and face? That's in the last week. Like that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, We're not even getting like scrolling out of his Google calendar page to find these embarrassing things. Like That's it, a choice not- Sydney made once a while ago was right. been stuck with. I, every other choice is been great but she did this one time choose this guy <laughs> are you sure are you sure there's gotta be something fundamentally fun <laughs> oh gosh politics is fun we have thank a lot you, of fun here. thank you so much for listening to our podcast i really 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 miss doing it and i really Me really too. really miss talking to you guys you both you two and the 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 listeners uh i i really miss doing this so it's so nice to be be back be back here with you and i hope that we're gonna be seeing some of you in person very soon. Exactly. I will also say, uh, mine and Justin's birthday is coming up soon. Uh, and it's a birthday present for me. If you are in some place where you can vote for Sydney, do that. That Thanks, would be Trav. a great birthday present for me. Um, Thanks, Trav. Hey, you're welcome. Now, uh, can you pick up on my, uh, let me do my my fun segue again. I, okay, and, yeah. And Griffin, if you want to interrupt with any plugs for my wife's candidacy, I listen, that's, that's all's fair. Yeah, set that tee, that tee that up again. Okay. Uh, and then I hope we see some of you in person soon uh, uh, in, here in the next week week away. Like, yeah. Very soon. And I vote for Sydney. Okay. So we're going to be in <laughs> Cincinnati yeah. and D.C. and Detroit. Um, That's not in that order, though. Not in that order. Travis, I'm begging you if you could just. Yeah, I don't have. We're going to be in Cincinnati doing my brother, my brother and me uh, on uh, in November 10th, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's the 10th. We're going to be up in Cincinnati doing a bim bam. Then in the 11th, we're going to be at the Masonic in Detroit doing a bim bam. And then on the 12th, we're going to be here in the district, in the DMV, as we say, in the DMV at the DAR, Constitution Hall doing a bim bam. And then the next night, we're coming back for Taz at DC, DAR, DMV, baby. Let's go with Brennan Lee Mulligan. DMing Dadlands 2. Y'all, I could not be more excited for that fucking live show. Come out to it. If you live within driving distance of this show, I guarantee you it's going to be a gosh dang barn burner. The last one was a hoot. It's out now. I, I did a thing with Roll Twenty Con, uh, playing with with Brennan and a bunch of other folks, including Abria, uh, and it was great. But I, when I was there, I was talking to Brennan about the show, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, maybe new characters." And the look on him was like, "You guys aren't going to be the same characters, but I love those characters." I'm and he was be the, the, the boyish guy. Yeah, yeah I absolutely. had forgotten that he remembered until he said, you're not going to be Guy Ferrari again? I was like, fuck, oh, that's man. good. Yeah, I'll be you Guy Ferrari. Be Guy Ferrari. Yeah, man. It's going right. to be great. Uh, speaking of Abria, we've rescheduled our shows for San Jose and Denver. They've been postponed, but now they will be April 27th in San Jose, California, Adventure Zone with Abria, who uh, just uh, tasted that when we did Spirit Breakers for Halloween. Abria is an absolute joy and brings out the best in us, I would say. Uh, April so 28th, uh, we're going to do a My Brother, My Brother and Me in San Jose, and then April 29th, we're going to be doing My Brother, My Brother and Me in Denver. All existing tickets will be honored for the new dates. If you can't attend the rescheduled dates, you can request a refund at the point of purchase, and if you don't have tickets but want to go now, uh, that we have new dates. Tickets are on sale now. Mask and proof of full vaccination or negative COVID test within 72 hours of event start is required. Uh, so it's a new month, so there will be new merch. Go check that out, macroymerch.com. A lot of cool stuff there. And don't forget to pre-order the TAS 11th hour. Uh, it comes out officially February 21st, 2023, but you can pre-order it now at the Adventure Zone Comic. Dot com. And I just wanted to say one more thing about that Detroit live show. Um, that is going to be on November 11th, which, as you all know, is the 14th anniversary of the release of Star Wars, the Clone Wars. We lightsaber can't. We on can't. the Wii. So yes. we're going to be able to do a, I feel like a themed 
right. Star Wars episode only makes sense to celebrate only that, makes yeah, sense. that release. And we can say that because they pay us no matter if people come or not. Like, we obviously prefer if people come, but if nobody shows up, then we can kind of like... Griffin's Griffin's right, but only in this very limited scope where like, that trick works once. <laughs> right, yeah. And then they don't do any more after that. So please We will do not come. be doing... I guarantee you we won't be doing a Star Wars show. I won't mention Star Wars up there. But it'll be in Justin's mind. You can feel it. You'll feel it. He'll You'll know. be in You'll full know. cosplay. Hey, yeah, thanks. What if, holy shit, what if we were in full cosplay but did not mention it? <laughs> okay, that's fine. Anyway, that's thanks good. to Montaigne also for the use of our theme song, My Life is Better With You. Uh, stream that album, making it, buy it, get it, get the merch, support the, support all art, but especially Montaigne's art because it's very good. That's it for it. That's it for the show. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Griffin, can you inspire us for like any quotes that you want to like? Um, well, you're looking very thoughtful. Don't give up. Unless, don't give up. Unless it's, unless, no. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on pushing. Oh, what's the thing that the guy, that one of the presidents said where he's like, if you're going through hell, don't stop. If you're going through hell, don't stop. <laughs> I think that's what he said. I think it was ben- I think it was don't stop. I think it was Benjamin Franklin who said, "If you're going through hell, don't stop." <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported. Use of our theme song, My Life is Better with You. Uh, stream that album, making it, buy it, get it, get the merch, support the, support all art, but especially Montaigne's art because it's very good. That's it for it. That's it for the show. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Griffin, can you inspire us for like any quotes that you want to like? Um, well, you're looking very thoughtful. Don't give up. Unless, don't give up. Unless it's, unless, no. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on pushing. Oh, what's the thing that the guy, that one of the presidents said where he's like, if you're going through hell, don't stop. <laughs> if you're going through hell, don't stop. <laughs> Give me up. I think that's what he said. I think it was, ben- I think it was, don't stop. I think it was Benjamin Franklin who said, if you're going through hell, don't stop. <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.